and we are here every two weeks. And I am joined by Alan uh, from Voices for Scotland. Hi, Alan. Hi, Michael. How are you doing today? Not bad. How's, how, how's things? Yeah, good, man. All very, very good. Um, busy, busy. Yeah, just just another another busy week at Voices. Um, just just doing our thing, getting stuff organised. We've got a, a few things coming up. We've got uh, Jerry Hassan in conversation event um, on Thursday. So that'll probably be tonight if you're listening to the podcast on Thursday. And we've got Sir Jeff Palmer uh, in conversation the week after. And then we've got a few other things coming up um, in November and December, which we haven't announced yet, but we will very soon. So lots of really good stuff coming up on the horizon as well. Yeah, that, that was good. Yeah, yeah. Um, before we start, um, if you want to get in touch with uh, Voices for Scotland, you can do so by uh, tweeting us, um, Voices for Scotland, or the website you can check us out at voicesforscotland.scot. So there you go. Um, so a couple of things made the headlines the last couple of weeks. So uh, I'll hand over to you for the first one. Yeah, so the first thing, I mean, obviously, I think a lot of people are talking about it was another poll showing increased support for, for independence. So this latest poll, which I think was done for FTV, uh, showed support at 58%. And I think that's the ninth poll in a row which is showing support for independence. So, yeah, I mean, it's really, really positive and things are obviously heading in the right direction. Um, and... Yeah, it, it's great, and yeah, it, it just follows a, follows a trend of 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 the support growing for independence. So, I think it shows that that um, more people are coming around to the idea and recognising that Scotland can and should be an independent country. Um, but I think as well, I think the really important thing, which 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 I always think when I see these polls, is that um, it's we can't take anything for granted, and we and even with a poll at 58%, or if it goes up to 60, 62, 64, we've got to keep working and we've got to keep campaigning because the thing that I'm very conscious about um, is about learning the lesson from what happened after the Brexit referendum. It really caused such division because the, the result of that was so particularly close, but it just really entrenched people in different different viewpoints and, and that can't happen um, with independence. So we need to keep growing the support, but we need to make everybody feel part of the conversation and part of the campaign. But but overall, I think it's a really, really positive thing. What what, what do you think, Michael? Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, um, well, to be honest, we haven't stopped since 2014. I think, um, we, you know, there's plenty of yes groups out there. Can I keep going? And you know you've got to, you've got to um, keep that kind of like momentum up there and get the word out there and stuff and speak to speak to mainstream groups but also speak to kind of like diverse groups as well. Um, you, you know that that could be kind of like um, you know disability, mental health, LGBT, race, religion groups anywhere and every pair that, that we can get into I think that that would be good to spread, spread the, the, the message or the good news about why it's positive to be an independent uh, country. Yeah I mean absolutely I mean I think I've, I've said this before a number of times that you know my own personal view and the way that I, I look at independence is it's the it's a, an opportunity it's an op- opportunity to create a a fairer and, and more equal society, um, but that only works if mm. everybody is involved in the conversation and the discussion about what an independent Scotland actually looks like and what it looks like for them. Um, you know, whatever you know background they come from, um, you know, however they sort of identify themselves as, whether that's a religious group or, or whatever it might be, um, it's so important that everybody's involved in that discussion and, and deciding what. An independent country does look like for them. So yeah, you're you're absolutely right, um, and it and you know you're right. And it, for for a lot of people, you know, the campaigning never stopped. And there's lots of yes groups all across Scotland, um, and England, um, and other other parts, um, who have been campaigning all this time. Um, 
but yeah, again, just touching on, on something that you said there, it's really important that we speak to other people that aren't members of those groups. We speak, because there's a, a huge number of people that, who, who who are undecided uh, and uh, undecided about how they would vote when the referendum does come along. Um, and we need, to, we need to be speaking to those people and we need to be um, making it relevant to them and, and understanding why understanding the opportunity that arises from independence and how we could make things a lot better for for everyone really and i think that's that's a, that's a huge part of what what we're doing at voices for scotland really is we're trying to have these conversations with people and to be honest a, a lot of the, the conversations that we're having are with people who already support independence but hopefully um what we are doing is we're we're helping to maybe change the conversations that people have or we're helping to think about things in a different way um, so that we can speak to different types of people and make people for make people feel part of it, um, mm. part of the conversation and part of the process of um, of actually coming up with ideas about what an independent Scotland might look like. So, and yeah. and also uh, also um, I think we need to get out there as well that uh, when, when I was kind of like canvassing and po possibly you were back in 2014, a lot of people uh, you know kept coming up. To us and say, yeah, I'm I'm not going to vote yes because of Nicola Sturgeon and the SNP, and we need to get that message across that that the yes vote is not all about the SNP. The yes vote is about picking your own. Uh, if you get yes, it's about picking your own government um, for for Scotland. So the yes vote isn't about all about the SNP. Uh, they, there's different groups, like Labour, uh, the Green Party, and, and you know stuff for like that. So, and then when, when we hopefully when we get that independent Scotland, we can choose we are we are own government. You know. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's what happened a lot of times in 2014. It wasn't Nicola Sturgeon's name that was mentioned. It was Alex Salmon's name. People come mm. up and say, "I don't like Alex Salmon. I wouldn't vote for independence." And I just, it's such a it. it it's, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me, but it's a it's an easy thing for people to pick up on, and a, and a good a good thing for um, for the opposition for unionists to to use, and I think we'll we'll come to that um, on our next topic in a minute. But um, the that I think again, so this is sort of stepping on what we'll, we'll be speaking about shortly. But I think if, if people voted for independence, then you're right that we're you're voting to, so you can choose your own government and it's i think it's it's maybe unlikely that there even will be an SNP in independent Scotland because remember the SNP is sort of made up of people with sort of uh, disparate p political views or different they sit in different parts of the political spectrum but they're united by the the, the want or the the need for independence so I don't know. I don't know what the future holds for for the the SNP um, mm. in an independent Scotland, but it gives opportunity for other parties to to you know to, to come back. Maybe maybe that is Labour. Um, maybe it's the Green Party. Maybe there'll be there'll be new parties that that come out of that as well. Um, so that argument about not voting for independence because of an individual politician doesn't really make sense because that's not what independence is about. I think the other thing about that as well though is that. And again, this is maybe partly partly why the the polls have been so much in favour of independence. Is the, the you know the, the coronavirus coronavirus crisis has really highlighted the need for um, independence and for autonomy, particularly particularly when it comes to you know finances. Um, you look at what's happening in the, the regional parts of England right now, and what's happening in Scotland is the different areas are being put into different restrictions some something in some areas quite close to a full lockdown that only works if there's a financial backing to support those businesses businesses and individuals who are affected by that um and it's you know for for scotland where you know the most populous parts of the country are, are under quite heavy restrictions right now the, the, the we need to the money needs to be there to be able to support businesses and individuals so that when we come out of that they still exist because there's a there's a real danger that they, that that won't happen but 
we don't have the money, we don't have the borrowing powers to be able to create that money so that it's there to support people. Um, I think so. I think I think that's a big big part of it. Um, is that it's it's the, the a vote, vote for independence um, or just even your support for independence right now is a step towards having that autonomy and having having the ability to actually support people that that need it in these difficult times. So, um, so yeah. So I, I think I think yeah. There's there's certainly been a lot going on, but it's a it's going back to the the poll. Um, really positive. Really great. Um, but I think you know we can't take anything for granted. We need to keep campaigning. We need to keep having the conversations and and getting other people involved so we can keep growing support because um, the more support that we have for independence and the more that's shown in the polls, then the more likely it is that we'll have that referendum and be able to go to the polling station and actually vote for independence. So still what we um, I, I think in football. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I, I think in football terms, Aaron, what this is, don't take your eye off the ball. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. There's still a lot of work to be done and we can't take anything for granted. No, exactly. Okay, let's move on to our next topic then, Aaron, that we're going to be speaking about. Yeah, so um, it was in the in the news yesterday. Um, there was a, a leaked document seen by Bloomberg News about a report that was produced, a sort of strategy report that was produced about how the Tories can stop independence from happening. Um, so it was produced by uh, um, by a, an agency called Hambury, which was set up by um, David Cameron's director of strategy um, and a sort of, you know pro Brexit group, pro Brexit team. And um, yeah, so there it was. It was setting out the strategy for how the Tories can sort of campaign or, or stop independence from happening and their um their sort of key ideas um from that were going back to what we'd mentioned earlier on was to attack the SNP or Nicola Sturgeon in particular. So attacking the SNP's record in government and attacking Nicola Sturgeon as an individual, which you can imagine when it comes to a time when people more people are campaigning will result in people saying, I'm not voting for independence because I don't like Nicola Sturgeon. So it'll be the same same thing that we had um, uh, again. The second thing, the second sort of key thing that I picked out of that was about um, the Tories or the, the, the UK government um, speaking to the EU and getting the EU to come out and say that Scotland couldn't join the, join the EU as an independent country, um, which I think is pretty ridiculous um, given that the the Conservatives or the, the UK government have had absolutely disastrous negotiations with the EU, um, disastrous negotiations with, with Manchester uh, over the last few days. I don't know how they can expect to go and negotiate with the EU and get them to come out and, and campaign on the constitutional matters within um, a country which is not part of the EU. So that's a that's a really interesting one and a bit bizarre actually, uh, if you ask me. Um, and then the third part of that um, as well was to to offer more power. So you know, up until now, there's been a sort of flat no from from uh, Boris Johnson and Michael Gove when it comes to the question of a referendum. It's been no no chance, not happening. Um, this once in a generation thing to keep rolling out. Which, by the way, is also mentioned in the report is is having little impact now. So you, I think you'll find that they'll stop saying that from now on. Um, but yeah, it's the offer of more powers to Scotland and more, um, devolving more powers to Scotland. Um, when I think of that, I think back to that front page of the Daily Record in 2014, that vow, um, mm. and just it wasn't worth the 25p or 30p. How much the Daily Record was then? I can't remember. <laughs> It wasn't worth that then, and it's worth even less now, particularly when you look at what's happened with the internal market bill. It's just all of a bit of a joke. But it was a, it's a really interesting um, insight into the into the possible strategies. I mean, to be honest, I think anybody who's who's sort of been involved or pays a close attention to politics, there's probably not a lot of surprises in there. But it's just I think it's interesting that this report has been commissioned and it's been produced now what what that tells me yeah. is that they're, they're they they see 
independence as a growing possibility or perhaps even a reality and um, they're taking it a lot more serious now that they're they're commissioning this thing in a typical form um, for this government you know they, they like to outsource everything and that includes their, their own thinking as well so um, yeah really interesting document and what I mean what what do you make of those, those I mean, sort of key points? I mean, uh... Yeah, I mean, I just think that when I saw this report that, that you showed me um, before we, we'd done this, and I, I could go quickly, I'm not, I'm not very surprised because I'm very sneaky, um, and that's a good Scottish word, sneaky, um, <laughs> about it. But it's when everybody is concentrating on the coronavirus and all that, and everybody's because like, there's a world pandemic, but you make it what the this government because you never know what the bit um, going on behind the scenes, and obviously this is uh, kind of happening now. I've not heard anything in like the the our kind of media in Scotland covering this as yet. Maybe it will. Maybe I'm totally wrong and, and it's came out and I've just not see, seen it. But yeah. yeah, they're a bit kind of like sneaky about going behind people's backs and, and speaking to like the EU and, and all that. And, you know, half they spoke to the EU or maybe they're just saying that or, you know, whatever. No, I don't, I don't think, I think this is just a report produced by an external company, you know, like a... a you know, sort of, I don't know if they're a think tank or a lobbying group or whatever they might well, be. It's well, just uh, if you're saying that they're connected to David Cameron, it gives it no, gives it no like smell of kind of being a bit biased. Well, I mean, it's it's probably a, a report produced for the Tory party, so it's it's a it's a strategy document, a strategy paper, um, and you know, there's there's a bit of a. I mean, it's it's fairly common for people who have worked in government to go off and then start working for think tanks or for big companies. I mean, you look at, you know, for example, uh, George Osborne, for example, he's mm. was the ed- editor of the Evening Standard, but also gets paid a lot of money by this finance company. Was it called BlackRock or something like that? Yeah. Um, so, and it's it's the same. I mean, there's a, like, you know, a, a quick look into it, and you find out that a lot of politicians, um, particularly particularly in the West, I'm, I'm not so sure about Hollywood actually, but a lot of politicians earn quite a lot of extra money from little bits of consultancy work here and there. Um, and we're talking tens of thousands of pounds for very little work um, for for different companies. And, and you know, I think we mentioned this in the other podcast as well, there's, a, there's a, quite a big scandal which is is known about, I think it will grow and grow about um, PPE and expenditure by the Westminster government on PPE um, and that, you know, about millions of pounds going to, um, to to various companies that have links to the Tory party. So, for example, so, I mean, just to put things in context, Manchester has been, Boris Johnson has taken the decision to put Manchester into this lockdown, which I don't know if you've seen the video, but Andy Burnham only saw that whilst he was doing a live broadcast. Somebody showed him uh, an email or a tweet, whatever it was, on the phone, so he had to sort of respond to that that live in TV, which Mm. has not gone down well um, for for the government. But just to put things into a bit of context, the the UK government's making £22 million available to Manchester during this lockdown. In uh, over the course of this pandemic, they paid forty three point eight million pounds to a dormant company for PPE, and they've, in total they've paid about one hundred and eighty million for PPE to companies that have links to the Tory Party. So you know, the, it's it, you know, it, it, this is and this is all happening without the proper without the, the normal tendering process happening as well. So, mm-hmm. I, so if we've sort of gone down a bit of a rabbit hole here, and, and, and but but um, it, it does sort of put things in into context a little bit. But it's just you know to go back to what what we're talking about, it is fairly fairly normal for people that have had close links with government to go out and then work with these different companies and produce reports and stuff like that. It's it's just I guess what happens rightly or wrongly. Um, but yeah, I think I think it is just it is a strategy paper 
I don't, there's not a huge amount that's particularly surprising in it, but it's good. I think it's, it's useful for people to know about because we, we know what to expect. We know what's coming. Um, and when, when, the, when the campaign does, does sort of ratchet up a little bit, which you'll expect will happen. I mean, it, 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 next year after the, the holiday elections, if everything sort of goes as expected, then you'll end up with a majority of SNP MSPs in Hollywood. And that is the mandate that they've been looking for so that we can have another independence referendum. If the polls are still um, roughly where they are, or maybe they're even higher, then there is, is pressure for on on Westminster to actually allow that to happen, to, to stop just having that flat no. Um, so it's important that we know we know these these sort of the, the strategy um, that's that's going to happen, and that we're you know that we're still camp that we are doing our job. We are campaigning. We're speaking to people. We're having conversations, and we're engaging people in the the you know the reasons for independence and why it's an important thing. So yeah, it's it's, it's interesting though. Interesting insight into into the strategy. Yeah, and and I don't think the campaign has ever went away. You know, maybe it took a bit of a lull after the 2014, was everybody was a bit disappointed. But um, but a couple of weeks later, we were all back on our horses and and we were ready to fight again. You know. Yeah, yeah. Well, do you know what? I'll be honest with you. Um, that that wasn't really the case for me. It took me quite a quite a while actually after twenty fourteen. Mm. I mean, I was it was um, I, there was various various reasons for it actually, but it, it took me a wee while to sort of get get back into it because um, it was it was such a, a massive disappointment. You know, it was when you when you put so much into it, so much time, yeah, so much right, effort, yeah. um, and and you really believe. And I think that was a big part of the problem is that we. We um, I sort of underestimated the echo chamber effect, um, mm. particularly in social media and around the people I, that I, I hang around with. I mean, I didn't know. I think only knew one person that was going to vote against independence um, back in 2014. Um, so I just, you know, I, I knew it was going to be close, but um, I really believed that we were going to we were going to do it. Um, so yeah, it took it took me quite a long time to get to get back into it. Um, just yeah, just it was it was a lot a lot to to overcome. But I think the important thing as well is that is that so much has moved on since then, and um, it's really important that we um, we learn our lessons from uh, 2014, but. Mm recognize it's a very very different landscape it's a very very different campaign yeah um, yeah and I, th- I think we i think we know we know um we know more things now about brexit and everything else that we didn't know in 2014 as well so i think that kind of helps us yeah definitely and, and and i think fundamentally there's so much more at stake now mm-hmm. um that um you know, we 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 talk sometimes about a sort of divergent path that Scotland could be on compared to you know the direction that this Tory government of the last ten eleven years is, is, or ten years has taken us on. Um, but the the it, it it almost seems like they're sort of polar opposites. These paths are just going in completely different directions. So I think that um, the there's a, there's just a lot at stake. Now, yeah. um, in terms of having, you know, a more equal and, and fairer society. Um, so yeah, there's just I think that's that's really one of the key things for me that, that and and which is why, um, personally, I, I feel so motivated and, uh, um, just eager to campaign as much as I can and do everything that I can do to make sure that we win this time because I just, for for so many people, um, they have been so deeply affected by the Tory policies over the last 10 years um, mm. and the indication from the Chancellor the other week was that we could see a return to austerity um, as as the coronavirus 
coronavirus, excuse me, coronavirus, coronavirus crisis. Mm. Not an easy yeah. thing to say. Um, as that, you know, hopefully, if we're looking at a, a vaccine at the start of next year, um, as as the actual health side of it um, dissipates, then we, then it will be the focus on the economic side of it, and the, there is the indication that we could be heading back towards austerity, um, and that's that's going to be utterly devastating for for a lot of people. We can't we can't have that. Just can't happen. It can't happen. And I mean, and I mean don't forget this is the same chance that came out two or three weeks ago to say to all the people working in the kind of entertainment art sector about um, you should get a second job. So, but, and that's not really fair, but in saying that, uh, you know, that he, uh, you know, it's a case of I'm all right, Jack, uh, you know, so he will be okay for years to come, but everybody else has like, got to suffer as well, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's not right. Yeah, I mean, this. I think his father was a, a billionaire um, hedge fund manager. You know, is. It, I mean, I think I think there's a and there's a, a big distinction a bit. You know, between how things. Uh, London has always seemed like a bit of a bubble, um, mm. and and things are are very different. And it just seems like comments like that are very out of touch. Um, with the majority of the population, and um, and that's that's a big problem because it's to, it sort of displays uh, a lack of understanding about reality for the majority of people in this country, and um, a lot of people are going through a really difficult time, and it's times like these where people need support the most, they need help, um, they need opportunity as well, and that's not presenting itself. So we need to, as, as a country, we, Scotland, need to create that opportunity and mm. provide that help for people that need it the most. So, yeah, yeah, it's all there in front of us. Yeah, so if you want to get involved, um, I, I know you uh, told us at the top, but if you want to get involved in any of the events Voices for Scotland are running and they're putting on different events every single week, um, just um, look us up on the website um, voicesforscotland.scot or else you can head it on to Twitter if that's your thing and uh, just look for at Voices for Scotland that's Voices for Scotland on Twitter and don't forget if you want to Find out more about the podcast, or else maybe you want you want us to speak about anything else that we're not um, speaking about. Um, then you can just email us or or tweet us on as well. We're always happy to happy to hear from you. So um, yeah, so hopefully that you enjoyed this episode, and we'll be back in a few weeks' time. Nice one. Thanks. Bye.